Thursday, December 2nd, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So I get this question quite regularly, and it's understandable people uh, ask this question. And the question is, what would uh, happen to gold and silver or precious metals in a deflationary collapse? And that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to look at uh, both deflationary and hyperinflationary, uh, what they mean and uh, what happens to the system in both. Uh, before we start, I just want to uh, quote J.P. Morgan when he was testifying in Congress in 1913 at the Peugeot hearings. He was asked what gold was, and many of you know this already. Uh, he said, gold is money, everything else is credit. And I guess if they had asked J.P. Morgan about silver, he would have said the same thing. Silver is money, everything else is credit. At the time, of course, the United States was in a gold standard, and that's why they were focusing on, uh, on gold, I would say. Um, the other thing I'm going to do uh, before we go into what gold and silver would do in a deflationary collapse is look at some definitions. And uh, many of you who have followed me for years know this already. You've probably uh, probably sick and tired of seeing uh, this dictionary here from the early 70s. And I take the early 70s because... At the time, I don't think uh, the uh, economics uh, ac academic scene had been corrupted as much as it is now. So we're going to look at two definitions today, not just inflation, but deflation. So this is what deflation is, according to the Webster Dictionary, the Merriam-Webster Reduction in the volume of available money or credit resulting in a decline of the general price level. So, yes, it's the reduction of currency and credit. Uh, because I would say a Merriam-Webster dictionary was not totally right there. Because by the early 70s, there was no real money flowing in the economy. Gold and silver ha had been taken out. So now we're going to go to inflation. And, and what does the dictionary here say? It says an abnormal increase in the volume of money and credit resulting in a substantial and continuing rise in the general price level. So the exact opposite, of course. <laughs> That's not surprising. Inflate and deflate. And the reason I, I always go to, to these definitions is that people use the word inflation and deflation very loosely nowadays. They, uh, they use it to uh, define the, the price level and they confuse cause and effect. And I think that's why we are in the situation that we are now, um, where the bankers... Uh, and the, the economists that run the monetary system, the banking system, they've been able to fool people into accepting huge, massive inflation of currency and credit. And if you don't believe me, if you think we've had uh, deflation, I'm going to show you a chart of M3, which is uh, the broadest measure of currency and credit. Yes, some would call it the money supply. Uh, I think it should call, be called C3, the currency supply, uh, currency and credit supplies, maybe CC3. Uh, so there you go. This is uh, as far back as I can go, unfortunately, 1960. And uh, does that look like it's going down? <laughs> no, it looks very bullish. Uh, anytime there's a blip, and it looks like we could have deflation, which, as we know, is the, uh, the reduction of currency and credit. The central bankers and governments together, they act in a way to stimulate it. 
So, and is it, isn't it interesting that uh, since last year, this line is really accelerated? No, it's not. So, now we're going to go uh, to the part where we look at what could happen because uh, we've, we've been through this, uh, that uh, you can have a hyperinflationary collapse and a deflationary collapse. And I would say the worst thing for gold and silver would be if they can balance things out. Think of a, a seesaw. If the Federal Reserve can keep the seesaw from going one, one way or the other, uh, then they, they, they've got the balance, they can keep the system going. But I, I think the seesaw is, is going to go one way or the other. It's going to go to hyperinflation or deflation. Uh, there is no way out. And uh, the reason why there's no way out is because of this massive increase in the supply of currency and credit that we've had. Well, since 19... 33, I would say, since uh, they put the U.S. domestic monetary system on a fiat currency system. And uh, Roosevelt brought about the, the welfare state, so to speak, the New Deal, and uh, increased government spending uh, and al allowed uh, the banks to create uh, currency out of thin air. Uh, there was uh, no gold backing, of course. You could say there was the gold cover, but that, that by 1968 was gone. Internationally, of course, that lasted till 1971. So, as von Mises says, once you go into the uh, inflationary path, it's very hard to get out of it. Uh, but there is a way to get out of it, and that's for the uh, monetary and fiscal authorities to rein in the inflation. Uh, that would mean <laughs> basically for the Federal Reserve to liquidate its balance sheet down to maybe below a trillion where it was before the 08 crisis. It, it would mean for government to stop spending and run surpluses. It would mean for the Federal Reserve to start raising interest rates. That would collapse the whole system that would co collapse uh, the currency uh, supply a and uh, that would lead to bankruptcy all over uh, the land, all over the world. Um, it could even lead to a collapse of the government. Uh, there wouldn't be any currency to pay debts <laughs> and uh, there wouldn't be yeah, people would have no money. The only money that would be left would be gold and silver. <laughs> people would revert back to it. And uh, what did gold and silver do during the Great Depression? Well, um, gold, of course, was confiscated in the U.S. I don't think they'll do it again if there is a deflationary collapse because not many people have gold. Um, the price of gold in terms of the currency went up uh, because Roosevelt confiscated in 1933 and on January 1st, 1934, he revalued the ounce of gold from $20.67 to 35. So it went up by 75% right there. What about silver? Well, silver was used as money so if you had saved a lot of silver or money, if you had a, a, a big jar with loads of dimes and quarters and half dollars, you would have been doing really well because money's purchasing power, and by money, of course, I mean gold and silver, money's purchasing power uh, increased massively during the Great Depression. So you would be all right. What about mining stocks? Because... Uh, a lot of you, of course, have exposure to mining stocks. I do as well. Well, let's have a look here at uh, home stake mining. That's a, an example that people give a lot uh, of how mining stocks 
did during the Great Depression. So uh, it says here, during the six years of the Great Depression, Homestake Money paid out $128 per share in dividends. If you bought Homestake Mining shares from your Wall Street broker in October 1929, they cost $80. By 1935, Homes, Homestake stock was worth $495 per share. So hopefully that answers your question about the deflationary collapse. While the other option, of course, is a hyperinflationary collapse and uh, in this in instance, uh, the seesaw goes the other way and things get really crazy. Uh, yes, and what happens in this situation is that the public, they lose confidence in the currency, and, but the monetary and fiscal authorities keep providing it instead of reining in. And when people realize that, they try to get rid as quickly as possible of that uh, 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 of that currency, and that means they're like uh, accumulating uh, hard assets, real goods, and eventually uh, the currency loses all its value, <laughs> and it's destroyed, uh, just like it's uh, the currency is destroyed in a deflationary collapse. So, and then. When the currency is destroyed in the hyperinflation, if you got some of these, you'll be okay. Uh, can I tell you what the, does it really matter what the price of, of money will be or gold and silver versus uh, the currency in a deflationary collapse or a hyperinflationary collapse? I, I, I don't think so because all, all that matters is that you're going to have purchasing power. You're going to be able to uh, exchange these for real goods uh, while with uh, the currency in the hyperinflationary collapse uh, the currency will be worthless and in the deflationary collapse there won't be uh, that much currency so um, that's the situation and a lot of companies will go bankrupt um, a lot of paper financial assets will have collapsed and uh, there will be uh, very little currency around. <laughs> and that's why it's also important to have real money in a deflationary collapse. So I'm going to refer you to two books here that I think will help you not only understand uh, deflation or inflation or collapse, hyperinflationary collapse, um, but it will also help you understand money um, the first one is what has government done to our money and the case for a 100% gold dollar by Murray and Rothbard. It's a classic. Uh, it's from the Austrian School of Economics. Murray Rothbard, of course, uh, was a huge proponent of the Austrian School of Economics. And he goes through the history of money. Because the Austrians have the view that you have to do the regression theory analysis. You have to go uh, uh, back to the origins of money to see what money really is. So I highly recommend this. You can find free PDFs online. I'm going to put them below in the description. What has government done to our money? It's not a long book, but a great book. It will help you understand uh, the nature of money and the economy and government. The other one uh, is also by Murray uh, Rothbard and it's called America's Great Depression. There you go. It's a bit bigger. You might be able to find a free PDF. I'm going to look for it. If there is a free one, I'll put it in the description. If not, uh, you're going to have to buy it. <laughs> um, the Mises Institute uh, sells this book, uh, Mises.org. So let's have a look here from the introduction by Paul Johnson, the Wall Street collapse and the Great Depression, which followed, followed it, were among the most important events of the 20th century by undermining confidence in the efficacy of the market and the capitalist system. Uh, they helped explain why the absurdly 
inefficient and murderous Soviet system of Soviet communism survived, survived for so long. For half a century, the conventional orthodox explanation provided by John Maynard Keynes and his followers was that capitalism was incapable of saving itself and that government did little to rescue an intellectually bankrupt market system from the consequences of its own folly. Rothbard produced in 1963 his own explanation, which turned the conventional one on its head. The severity of the Wall Street crash, he argued, was not due to the unrestrained license of a freebooting capitalist system, but to government's insistence on keeping a boom going artificially by pumping in inflationary credit. His book is an intellectual tour de force. It has stood the test of time with success, even with panache. So there you go. Uh, so now let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's uh, 20 past 8 a.m. London time. So yeah, I would say the uh, before I, I go and, uh, and look at the prices, the most important thing in whatever happens, deflation, hyperinflation, is purchasing power. Uh, I don't think the seesaw is going to stay level or the balance. Let's use the balance. It's going to go one way or the other. And that's why I, I personally am, am keeping a hold of my gold and silver. I, I notice I'm getting a lot of trolls out there. And uh, that's a good thing. I don't care. It gives me a, 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 an idea of where things are that uh, despite the fact that gold and silver are doing well, people uh, seem to think that they need to like troll uh, this channel. But um, go ahead. And you guys know who you are. Anyway, um, we've got spot gold down $8 at 1773. Range has been uh, 85 to 72.62. So we're near the lows. Uh, silver is up three cents at 22.35. Uh, the high has been 22.50, the low 22.23. So the stock market yesterday <laughs> uh, was doing very well. And it turned around at the end of the day on news of this new uh, variant, I, I would say. Uh, and uh, it hasn't been a good uh, week so far. We've got the Dow down about 5%. S&P is down 4 NASDAQ is down 3 and 3 quarters percent this week. Uh, and the uh, Russell, uh, the small caps, uh, is down about 7.5%. So... Keep that in mind. So right now, the Dow future is up two thirds of a percent or 220 points. The uh, S&P 500 is up uh, the same in percentage terms. And uh, the NASDAQ 100 futures is up half, half a percent or 86 points. To the currencies, uh, sterling is up 0.1 of a percent at 132.90. The euro is unchanged, 113.18. Uh, the dollar is up 0.4 of a percent versus the yen at 113.23. A uh, dollar is unchanged versus the yuan, Chinese yuan, 637.45. Uh, Aussie dollar is uh, unchanged, 71.09. The uh, dollar is down 0.2 of a percent versus the Canadian dollar, 127.94. And the Kiwi dollar is up uh, 0.15 of a percent at 68.17. Uh, and to finish off, let's have a quick look at the 10-year yield or the treasury market. 10-year yield is up uh, just under two basis points at 1.45%. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.